deceiveth me. But, there's a condition. Whoso shall offend one of these little ones, one of these little ones, you offend one of these little ones which believe in me, which believe in Baha Shema Mashiach, understand the power of Baha Shema Mashiach Yavashah. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he be drowned in the depth of the sea. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind because you quick to condemn someone and you don't even know that it might be one of the little ones. Could be one of the little ones. You see, you might as well tie a uh, loose a millstone. It'd be better for him to, that a millstone were hanged about his neck. That's a big giant boulder, a big giant stone, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Throw this big, throw it around your neck. Put it around, put a rope around your neck, and tie the rope around a big boulder and cast it into the sea, rather than to offend one of his little ones understand this overstand this it's very very important look at um Luke 17th chapter Luke 17th chapter Look at, let's look at Luke the, ten, the 16th, the 17th chapter in verse 7. Luke 17 to 7. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? Which one of you going to say to your servant that's been out there working all hard all day long, go and sit down and eat? You yeah, food prepared for him. You worked hard for you. All day in the hot sun. Plowing and feeding cattle. And would not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup. He done worked all day until he come in and then say, hey, go in there and cook for me. Get my food ready. Make ready for me so I can eat. And gird thyself. And serve me. And serve me. Till I have eaten and drunk. Till I have eaten and drunk enough. You done worked hard in the field, feeding the cattle and plowing the ground, doing everything out there. You come in, you ask him, you going to have something for him to eat? Or you going to tell him to go in there and make you something to eat? That you may sup and gird yourself and, and serve me that till I have eaten and drunk. And afterward, thou shalt eat and drink. And after you do that, then you can eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I throw not I think not I don't think he will thank him for the things that the servant done They're working hard out there feeding the cattle and plowing the ground doing everything you know hot sun and so forth coming in then you gotta fix the meal for you so likewise ye when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which was our duty to do. See? See? We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which our, which was our duty to do. That's why he said in uh, Romans 12, go to Romans the 12th chapter, verse 1. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, not getting what we deserve from the Most High. 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, it's your reasonable service for us to be doing what we do in serving the Most High, keeping His commandments, and working in this truth to bring forth the word of truth to our people. Listen, and be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. The world set up to send you straight to hell. Where the worms never die and the fires never quench. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind the way you think, the renewing of your mind the way you think, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So I got to renew your mind the way you think. Or you're going to be conformed to this world. You love the world. You at war with the Most High. James 4 and 4 says. You're going to be the enemy of the Most High. Be conformed to this world. So I say renewing of your mind. Transforming your mind. But the way you think. But it's going to take an effort by yourself. But you're looking for somebody else to convert you. No, you got to convert your own. You got to be converted by your own thoughts, your own speech, your own actions. You can't look for somebody else to do this for you. Because we all going to meet the judgment seat of my check on shot by ourselves. You hear the message and you apply it in your life. You live it. You learn it. You apply it in your life. That's what it's all about. No more, no less. To change. Become better. Luke 22. Luke the 22nd chapter. And we're going to look at verse 24. And there was also a strife <coughs> among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. So they going back and forth with each other, which of them shall be count accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. The kings of these other nations outside of the twelve tribes of Israel exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. They're going to benefit from the people. But ye shall not be so. You're not supposed to be like this. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. Him that is greatest upon you, let him be as the younger. Those that's coming in as a trooper, as a member, I might say. And he that is chief, as he that does serve. He that is chief, he that does serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth. Is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. Now how you going to be Mashiachim? How you going to be like him? He say, who's greatest? The one that's being served or he that's serving? He say, I'm, I'm among you as one that serveth. That's why I say he humbled himself. I'm, he said, and he that is chief as he that does serve. For whether it's greater, he that sitteth at me or he that serveth. Is not he that sitteth at me. You'll think that's the greatest because they're getting it first. They're getting their meals served to them. He said, look, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my, my temptations. You hear that? His temptations, plural. That's one that tells you when Ecclesiastes 2 and 1, when you come to serve the Most High, prepare. Prepare, prepare yourself for temptation. The tempter, the devil. Isn't that what happened to my second shot? When he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted just like everybody else being tempted in this world. Came in the flesh just like us. He had to deal with temptations, it says, over and over again. 
He said, and I appointed unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. Same as if my Jacob and Shai had been appointed of this kingdom from the Most High, the same as he given us a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What he told the apostles. They're going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Look at uh, St. John 13. St. John 13 chapter. St. John 13. <clears throat> Let's start at verse 1. This is a story about Amasha Abishai washing the disciples' feet. Now before the feast of the Passover... When the Mashiach of Shai knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Now, they having Passover, supper, in the house, in the upper room. That's where the Passover was done in the house. That's why they came and dealt with everybody in their house. And they having the judgment of Mashiach of Shai. That's why there's only a few that we really dealing with the day that he died and so forth. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart or the mind of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Malshabashai, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from the Most High and went to the Most High, knowing that he came from the Most High, going back to the Most High, as all of us have, we spirits. The most I bring the spirit back into the earth, the most I take the spirit back. <clears throat> he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So he laid Ben down and was wiping, it, wiping, it, wiping their feet with the towel that he, that he was girded around. Then come he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Master, dost thou wash my feet? And I shall answer and said unto him, What I do thou knoweth not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Say, what I'm doing, you don't know what I'm doing, but you're going to know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And I shall answer him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Say, if I don't wash you now, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Master, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So, you know, he said, hey, not my feet only, my hands and my head. My disciples said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. See, all I'm saying you clean, but not all of you. Because he know he had a devil among them. For he knew who should betray him was Judas Iscariot. Therefore said he, you are not all clean. That's why I say you are not all clean. He knew Judas Iscariot was going to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. So after he had washed their feet and had taken their garments and was set down again, taking his garments, like you, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? He said, You know what this was for? You know what I've done to you? He called me master and and. Lord, and ye say, Well, for I, for so am I, for so I am. If I then, if I then, your master and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example 
that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his master, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. He's letting you know the servant is not greater than his master. Neither he, remember he said he the one that served. He said neither, and these are examples of humility that he had. In washing his feet. He said the same thing we're supposed to do. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his master. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. See? Let you know he's not greater than the Most High. If you know these things, happy are ye. If you do them, happy are ye if you do them. Just a moment. 